Yeah. On our way out to go hunt. I would hope so. As my brother said, we look like some uh, special type of deer hunters, duck hunters, deer duck, duck deer hunting. Yeah. I don't know. We're gonna try to shoot pretty much buck or doe. I've been seeing a nice three-year-old, a decent two-year-old, and a year and a half old hanging out two times in a row down the same spot problem is getting the right wind. Ordinarily on this property you want a west wind to be able to hunt these deer, but in the location they're holding up in real tight this time of year, you want a complete east wind to be able to get close enough because you got to loop around the back side of the property and get up in a little pinch point. They're just not coming from the same spots as they normally would in like October or November. Their bedding habits are different, their feeding pattern is different. It's just different when there's a big group of deer, it's no longer individual smaller groups or individual bucks all doing their own thing. There's a lot of deer in here. It's the last two times I was back in the spot, there was the same group of deer. There was probably 20, 25 does and there were three bucks, same three bucks. Hopefully we can get in close. Obviously I'm hoping for a buck. I'd love to end the season on that but the season does end on February 7th so we don't have a lot of time left and definitely not that many good days left especially since a lot of the deer are dropping their antlers already hopefully we can make it happen tonight hopefully we can kill something if not it'll be fun anyways but we're gonna keep our fingers crossed and hopefully we can close in on these deer let's do this that was a big doe where'd she come from he was just standing there that's exactly where I saw that go last time I was here. guys welcome back to another video so we are on our way right now to actually drop the catalog off to get the brakes serviced I have a feeling it's the brakes making a little bit of a squeaking sound on the front end you might even be able to hear the squeak yeah, right there. There's a couple of things I'd like to do today. Hopefully one of them is getting a new grid heater put in Rosine because that thing cold starts so hard. It should be starting up like the silver second gen. Every time you place an order at lmpgear.com, you get more entries towards winning the silver truck plus $5,000 cash, but that giveaway ends on February 15th. You guys have just over two weeks. Don't forget to grab those entries. Link is in the description below or just go to lmpgear.com, place an order, and you're automatically entered to win a truck. It's that simple. So anyways, that truck fires up on a dime. Like as soon as you touch it on the key, like after it sits for about five seconds with the wait to start light on in the coldest conditions, it just, boom, just fires right off. And that's what they're supposed to do. I mean, even though they're old trucks, they're still supposed to start up really good because if they started up great 20 years ago when they were brand new and all the parts were new, chances are they should still start up like that as long as you don't have any other crazy mechanical issues or electrical issues, you should still be able to start it up just like they used to. So chances are there's just something wrong with your truck if it doesn't start very well. So hopefully we can get back here and fix that little mishap on Rosine. There's also something else we gotta show you with Rosine. Cadillac is dropped off so Mama can get back to driving her daily driver because this is her um, not daily driver but anyway so this thing needs a, needs a grid heater right needs a grid heater at least that's what we think and I was complaining about it in a video I'm like oh thing needs a grid heater it starts so hard in the cold and it's not supposed to start this hard and then a fellow subscriber was like was like hey man I can hook you up with a free grid heater I'll even pay to ship it to you and I was like so it's gonna be free you're gonna pay for shipping and you're like, you're just gonna give it to us? He's like, yeah. I was like, you're the man. 
So that's how it starts when it's already been warmed up. So essentially, rosine has been starting very, very, very hard anytime it's a cold day. It's just not good, and I know that these trucks are supposed to start much better than that, even on a cold day. I mean, the silver truck, as soon as you touch the key, it just fires off on a dime. That's how they're supposed to start with a properly functioning grid heater, assuming that that's the issue. A subscriber and fellow friend, uh, Colt Troxel from Sterling City, Texas, actually sent us in a grid heater for this truck, and uh, he said that he bought it for a 12 valve and didn't realize that the 24 valves and 12 valves technically use a different style grid heater. Very similar, but slightly different. So he actually sent this to us and hopefully it's the right one and we can get this thing bolted on here and hopefully this thing does not crank so awfully hard anytime it's a cold morning. Got us at least close enough to get our tools to it very easily. Remember guys, if anybody else is wanting to send us anything at any time, it doesn't have to be a truck part, it can be anything that you'd like to send in. Our PO box number is PO box 272, New Haven, Indiana 46774, just with attention to or ship to loud and proud. So we're gonna get to installing this thing real quick. We're not gonna be able to know if it is the solution to the problem today because it's, you know, already been warmed up and driven today. But first thing tomorrow morning or in the next video that we do post, we will let you know how this has affected the starting capability of this truck. Let's get this hood popped. But I'm pretty sure you just need a 10 and a 7 16 First thing is first, disconnect your battery cables just to be sure that you do not fry anything because there's power running to the grid heater. Our grid heater out. And we're just gonna do a quick comparison side by side. This was the side closer to the cab. This is the side closer to the front end of the truck. Let's see here side by side what this one looks like in comparison. And it appears to be identical. We're gonna get this put in, button it back up. And that is all there is to it. All I have to do was use a 7 16 to loosen the top band on the intake so I can rotate it out of the way, take it a 10 mil, 10 mil, 10 mil, 10 mil, 10 mil, then do the two 10 mils on the back right there, and then just take that off, drop your new gasket and your new grid heater on, and put it back together. Total project took about maybe 15 minutes. Batteries are hooked back up, ready to start it up, back it on out of the shop. And also, Rosine is back on stock wheels and tires. As you can see, stocks again. Why is Rosine back on stocks? Um, quick and short answer is it rides way better. Detailed answer, I guess I can try to describe it the best that I can in just a moment here. And for everybody asking about this truck, I get so many questions about this truck. You know, what are you doing with the bumper? Why is it still on there? The bumper is still on its way. I'm still waiting for the new bumper to show up, people. I have said this so many times in videos, so many times on Instagram, so many times on Facebook, tons of comments, tons of posts. The bumper is not staying. This bumper will be off this truck. And that dog will be free to whoever wants him. But this bumper will be off of this truck as soon as the new one shows up. But until the new one shows up, this makes a nice deer guard in case I hit deer on the road. The body lift is also coming off and suspension is going on. The suspension did actually show up the other day though. So that is going to be hopefully installed this weekend. It depends on uh, Devin's availability to get it done. But I'm hoping that it is, you know, on the truck this weekend. That is the hopes and I can't guarantee it. You know, some, some Sometimes things come up, but I do have all new body bushings as well. Let me go over that. The truck's gonna get all new body bushings. So essentially, this is what I ordered. You see how these are kind of cracked, kind of wore out? Well, I ordered all new bushings for the cab 
and all new bolts for the cab. So hopefully that'll make it ride even that much better. Once we get the body lift taken off, we're also gonna be installing, like I said, new bushings, new bolts and all that stuff. So it should really help with the ride quality. And this truck met all the requirements of a clean truck with lower miles for my area. And so that's why I decided to go with this truck. And I have some people that have said in, you know, some of my posts, it's not a low mile of truck. It's got 130,000 miles on it. Guys, the average person drives 15,000 miles a year. This truck was driven 6,000 miles a year. That is why I consider it low mileage. This truck is the exact same year and has 268,000 miles on it, which is not higher than average mileage. That just means the truck was actually driven the average amount of mileage a vehicle is driven each year. So we're gonna go in the shop here and I'm gonna tell you what is going on with the truck riding like garbage. I don't know the exact reason, but I'm gonna to try to make my best guess. So that truck right out there, before we had the lift put on in a new front axle, the truck had an axle on it that was bent. On the passenger side, the whole hub was just tilted in like this. So the tires on the front wore unevenly. And as you can imagine, when the front is all twisted and messed up, it can even sometimes, not in all cases, but sometimes affect the wear and tear of the rear tires, even though this is a straight axle front and rear truck. So you would think the rear shouldn't be affected. Well, sometimes it can still happen to a small degree. And so if you look at these tires, when these were on that truck, when it was only leveled and it had the bad axle on it, it wore down the tires a little bit unevenly and it's making the truck ride really bad. So if you look down the tread very carefully, okay, you can see how it's a little bit lower wore down here and it's a little bit higher here and it's real choppy. And then on the outside, it kind of like rounds out, kind of crappy. So same thing on these. Um, if you look real closely, it's a little bit more wore down in the middle, not as much on the outer side. Anyways, like I was saying before I was interrupted by my dog, I apologize. These tires have only got about 2,000 miles on them and I've ran these tires on other trucks before. And you know, I've never ran them a super long period of time, but the times that I have ran them, I've never been dissatisfied with them. I never thought they rode bad. I never thought they gave the truck any kind of a weird vibration. I never thought they wore down unevenly. Like I was actually very, pleased with how these tires, you know, wore and rode and stuff like that, noise wise and all that stuff. It is a mud train tire. They are gonna change your ride a little bit. They are gonna change your tire sound a little bit from factory, obviously. But I've never been like dissatisfied, like wow, these are horrible tires. So obviously the truck that these tires were on was a slightly different application and it already had some components that were wrong with it to where it would already wear down any set of tires on it. So that's what it had going against it. And I'm just gonna assume that it had more to do with the truck than I did the tires. But yeah, that's why these are off. Now, the silver truck on the other hand, with the Venom Power tires on it, I've only driven it probably 300 miles with those tires on it so far. That thing rides super smooth and the tires are actually pretty darn quiet. Way quieter than these ones over here. Totally different tread pattern and design and all that stuff, but very happy with how those ride on that truck. And just a little teaser for you. That Jeep may be a dually converted rear end here within the next, I don't know, one or two videos. Also, do you think we should straight pipe this truck? It's got a huge muffler on it. it sounds fine, um, but it doesn't sound quite the way I would like it to. If you guys would like to see that done, I'll consider having that thing with a true full five inch exhaust front to back or four inch, whatever you guys pick down in the comment section below. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, if you wanna to enter to win this truck, the giveaway ends on February 15th and all you have to do is go to lmpgear.com, place an order of anything on the site and you're automatically entered to win this truck plus five grand. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate all of the support. Thanks for watching the videos, leaving your likes, leaving your comments, highly appreciate it. Anyways guys, we'll catch you in the next video. Peace.